Hi, I'm Rob. I'm a winter sports expert at Curated. I've helped over a thousand people get the right equipment for them. And I'm here today at Powder Mountain in Utah, testing out the Line Blade Optic 96 Ski. We're not compensated or sponsored for this review, so you can be sure that the review is our unbiased opinion. I'm gonna give you my impressions that I have when I ski this ski and nothing else. The line calls this ski a playful all-mountain ski, and that's exactly what it is. It's solid at carving shorter to medium radius turns. It's super poppy. It's got a nice soft shovel, but it holds an edge through the turn. My overall impression on this ski is I had a blast on my several runs with it on a pretty icy powder mountain this morning. I would love to own a pair of these. I think that they cater really well to my style on firm days. If I go back east, I would absolutely get a pair. They're really fun. That said, they're super niche. I don't think that most intermediate advanced skiers who ski groom snow would enjoy these. Stick to a non-twin tip ski, a carving ski. I also don't think most park skiers would enjoy these. I think these are best for someone who has skied freestyle in the past, but does love carving, enjoy going fast, and skiing steep groom trails, because that's what they're best for. And don't forget, if you want help finding the right board for you, click the link below and get hooked up with me or one of my fellow experts so we can get the right skis for you. I would ski these skis all over the mountain. I'd take them into the trees. I'd love to ski them in the bumps. And they're really fun on groomers as well. I would avoid skiing gates with these. They're not designed for that. They might be a little tough on a really frozen icy day. This is a very stable ski, but I would say its turning radius is fairly limited. It likes making large radius turns. Small, narrow slalom turns are not what this ski is gonna be good at, and that's because it's pretty stiff underfoot. It is stable on long radius turns, arcing down the mountain. That said, the tip and the tail are a bit looser. They're super flexy, as you can see, and it stiffens up once you hit the point where the early rise begins in the tip and the tail. I would have loved this ski in February. It would have been a blast on those firm days because I still could have taken it in the trees, hit jumps, skied switch, buttered, nose presses, all of that. But just not something I'm gonna use in the park because of that metal underfoot, it's way too heavy. That said, the swing weight on these is still pretty low. It doesn't feel that heavy in the air. It's nimble, it gets edge to edge quickly. It's just heavy in terms of not something you're gonna be wanting to hit rails and boxes with. It's not maneuverable enough for that, and I think it's best used skiing around the mountain, all mountain, through the trees. The edge hold on this ski is pretty solid. Um, we are skiing in pretty firm conditions here. I'd say this would do really well on Eastern groomers uh, and, and could be a really great one ski quiver for someone in you know, Northern New England or a harder snow ski for someone out West. I would recommend these skis to advanced intermediate to expert skiers who sk like skiing with a relatively modern neutral stance. I would not recommend these skis to racers who really like to drive through the front of the boot through the ski. Different skis work differently for different types of skiers. If you want help finding the right ski for you, reach out to me or one of my fellow curated experts and we'll make sure we'll get you in the right equipment so that you can have a great day on the snow. And if you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe so you can see more video content from Curated.